Okay, I'm just gonna say it. I hate piano competitions. I don't really hate piano competitions. I love a lot of piano competitions. I love the big piano competitions. I like watching the Van Cliburn, uh, you know, Tchaikovsky, Rubinstein, all those are wonderful competitions. Um, and I love competitions for students who are really self-motivated, who understand what a competition is and, and what it's not. But what I have found, and this is a conclusion that I've arrived at slowly, because I've had many uh, students who are competition students, I've had competition winners, I've chaired competitions, I've practically started a competition uh, here in Austin. Uh, but what I've found is a lot of people don't know the reasons uh, for a competition. They don't know what it means to be in a competition. And what I hate is that in many cases, when people are unaware of the, the reasons of a competition, especially for smaller children, uh, I think it really perverts what it means to be a musician. So I wanna talk about why, and I wanna talk about why I do not enter many of my students in competitions anymore. And maybe talk about when I do. So uh, first of all, before I get to the actual competition and the, the students in the competition, I wanna talk about good motivation and bad motivation for being in a competition um, from a teacher's perspective. This is a really hard thing to separate and I think that we as teachers need to be honest about this because it's very easy when you have a student or students winning things it's really easy not to make that about you and Part of it is about you, right? You, you're, you are the teacher. I mean, without your help, they probably would not have won. But it's hard not to live vicariously a little bit through the student. And I, I'm not kind of, I'm, I'm painting with a very broad brushstroke. There are many, many teachers who do not do this. But I think that it's a temptation for all of us. It's, it's a temptation for all of us to get a little bit too wound up in how our studio compares to other people's studios. And uh, I know this from experience. It feels great when you have a, a student win. Um, it feels wonderful. It feels wonderful to get congratulations from other teachers. Um, you know, it really makes you, you feel good, and, and it should. But um, we have to separate that, I think, from what's good for the student. And uh, in many cases, I think there are situations where competitions aren't good for the students. So let me give you a scenario that I, I think is really quite unhealthy and unfortunately very popular. That scenario is uh, what goes on in, in many, many teachers' organizations uh, to have competitions for students in first grade, second grade, these lower grade levels for kids who are six, seven, eight years old who have no idea what's going on to go in and have them play for 30 seconds and then in front of everyone to have them ranked by someone who is very pretty much unfamiliar with their playing, um, who may or may not be qualified, probably is qualified but maybe not, and really who is expected to make a judgment call on hearing 20 seconds of playing, right, on what student is best. So. Let's just leave out the psychology of the students for a second and talk about a little bit about how absurd uh, this really is. You cannot know a student's playing in 15 seconds or 30 seconds of, say, like a Bach minuet. It's impossible. And the idea that you would be able to rank, you know, first, second, third is is maybe you could do that. You know, if you, there are usually in, in these things, I mean, I've judged them, uh, there are usually, you know, a couple students who really stand out as great. But there are almost always 10, 15 who are, it's kind of just a, ma a, a mass of like, okay, that was another Bach minuet that I heard, right? It's not like there's an objective ranking system. So um, let's just admit, first of all, that it's a little absurd, right? Now, um, but let's say that, that there really was someone who stood out as first place. Okay, that's great, and that's awesome for that kid. And I'm not of the mentality, by the way, that kids should not be awarded for, for doing good or that you know there shouldn't be such a thing as first, second, third place. That's not my argument. But I do think that it's really destructive if the 10 kids who are in there who 
maybe just haven't blossomed yet, maybe just haven't had the chance to mature, or maybe taking their own path musically, are sort of led to the conclusion of, oh, I'm just not as good, right? And extrapolate from that, uh, you, know, I, you know, I'm okay at piano, but there's no use really, really trying to, to get particularly good. Maybe I love it, but um, I love music, but you know, obviously like I'm not playing as good as that other kid. So uh, why should I try? Now, many kids don't think like this and that's fine, but you'd be surprised at how many kids do draw these kind of conclusions. What's even worse though is that the parents draw these conclusions. And most parents are not musicians. Most parents, you know, I'm not putting parents down. Most parents have a hard time understanding that this person who's been called a judge is not getting his a revelation from on high in terms of the ranking of this. And I have many times encountered situations where a parent will come back or a student will come back and say to me, oh, you said that there should be a crescendo here, uh, but the judge said there shouldn't be, and why didn't you tell me that? And to try and explain to them that oh, this is a matter of interpretation. I mean, you're banging your head against a wall. And so the fact is, it's not that they're dumb. I mean, it, it, it's that they don't understand that in many cases, there is a matter of opinion going on here and that one person might like one way of doing something and one person might like another way of doing something and that there is room for opinion and variability in art and in music and how something's interpreted. Uh, and that even at a young grade level, there's room for variability about, oh, I liked how this kid played versus how this kid played. Uh, a lot of parents who, if they're not in the arts, don't understand that. And so what they extrapolate uh, or, or kind of the conclusion that they reach from the fact that their kid got 20th place out of say 30 kids or whatever is, uh, or let's not say 20th place, but just didn't get first place is, well, my kid's just not ever going to really do that well in music, right? Which is at the age of six or seven, completely absurd because we all have seen that some kids don't do so well at age, say, six, and then suddenly they can take off at age eight and nine. I've seen it many times. Yes, there are some prodigies who come in and you just say, wow, this kid's really got a like a skill set that they're going to be able to continue with. But there are many other times when it's a more of a gradual thing and maybe they take off in a spurt, say, at age nine, and then, you know, things kind of cool off for a year or two, and then they have another spurt. You know, every child develops in a slightly different way when it comes to something like music. So all of those conclusions can be really harmful, but I think that that's not the most harmful thing. The most harmful thing is what this teaches children about how to think about life and how to think about themselves. Because basically what it says in many cases, with whether it means to or not, is if there's something you're working on, you should subject yourself to the ranking and opinion of an authority figure, the judge in this case, and no matter how hard you've worked or no matter how you feel you're doing, what they say and how you rank among all your peers is more important. I really think this is a disastrous thing to teach children. I mean, it's really sad because what we should be teaching them is if you work hard uh, at something, you can improve based on your own standards. We shouldn't be teaching them there are no standards, and we shouldn't be teaching them that, like, you know, no matter what you do, it's good. I'm not saying that. But we certainly shouldn't be teaching them, I'm going to put you in a room with a bunch of other kids, and then some of you are going to be made to feel really good, and the rest of you are probably going to leave feeling like losers based on some authority figure right? Some person who just judged whether you were good or bad. A lot of kids are fine, right? They'll be fine with this. But I think that there's a, a very subtle subconscious um, kind of mental virus that, that, uh, that, that this can infect a child with. And I'm, I'm going to be judged not on my own merits, on how I've progressed and how hard I've worked, but on how someone else judges me. And I really am against entering children in these sort of things until they have the understanding of this doesn't mean anything about me. 
This doesn't mean anything about how good I can be as a musician. This is simply a motivator. It's a goal for me. I'm going to try my best. It's a game. It's like playing basketball. Sometimes I'll win, sometimes I'll lose. Maybe I like basketball, maybe I like hockey, maybe I like chess. If you're like me, I didn't like any sports uh, up in, uh, through high school. I, I would just kind of skip gym class as much as possible. So, uh, you know, until there's that understanding, uh, I think we, we have to be really, really careful. And we have to set our own, um, our own kind of short-term desires as teachers aside where it feels good to have students win and to, to kind of drill them and, and, and uh, get them this particular little 30 second piece polished so that they can rank well amongst their peers. And I think we have to be really, really careful that we're thinking in the student's long-term best interest where what counts is, did I uh, work hard? Am I trying my best to achieve this goal that I've chosen, which may be to play um, a list etude, it may be to play a five finger pattern, and it just varies from child to child, right? So uh, that's my two cents. I hope I haven't been so strong, you know, anti-competition that I, that with, without enough caveats, that there are many, many times competitions are good, uh, especially as motivators, um, especially as goals to work towards. But I really think that we have to be careful about the mindset. And I think we should really be suspicious if we're having competitions for the younger ages. I'm just, you know, to be honest, I'm just not always convinced that this is a competition for the kids. I think it's many times a competition for the teachers. Whether the parents know that or not, I'm not sure. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll be burned in effigy for, for saying that. But that's just what I found. And uh, it's been a hard conclusion for me to reach because it does feel good to have, have students win. And I will continue entering my students in competitions um, when, when they know what it's all about. Uh, but I think that for me, the music's gonna come first and the children are gonna come first and the competition will be at best, you know, something on the side, uh, something something auxiliary to, to what it's really all about, which is teaching an art form, teaching the love of music, um, and giving the child something that he can use or she can use uh, for the rest of their lives.